If you're thinking about purchasing a home or you already own a home and you're sick of paying that mortgage or that death pledge, you want to get out of that a little bit quicker, I'm going to give you three ways. And in fact, I'm feeling kind of generous today. So I'm going to give you a fourth bonus way to pay off that mortgage earlier. So make sure you stick around for that. My name is Dietrich Williams. I'm a realtor here in Southern California. And for those of you who have a mortgage, this is going to sound rudimentary. For those of you who've never done this before, we're gonna kind of start from the beginning, so forgive me. When you go to get a mortgage, or when you get a mortgage, it typically consists of two parts. The first part is the amount that you're going to repay back, or the amount of money that you borrowed that you're gonna repay back, and that's called the principal. The second part is interest you're gonna pay that back. Consider it a fee that the lender charges you in order to borrow that money. Now, when you first start paying off a mortgage, most of what you pay is gonna to go toward the interest. But as you pay it off over time, your principal is going to get lower and lower. So the bulk of that is gonna switch from being more interest heavy to being more principal heavy the more you pay it off and the longer that you have that loan. Now here's the exciting part. If you decide to pay a little bit extra on that mortgage and apply it toward the principal, that means that the amount of interest that you're gonna pay over the life of the loan is going to be less. So I'm gonna show you ways that you can actually pay that off sooner. But first, let's use an example. Just imagine that you're gonna purchase a $650,000 house. You're gonna put 5% down and you're gonna get an interest rate of about 7% based on today's market value and you're gonna do a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. Your monthly mortgage payments are gonna roughly be around 40, about $4,300. I think it's 4,317 to be exact, about $4,300. Your lender is gonna give you something called an amortization schedule, which means they're gonna give you a, basically a list of when your payments are due, how much they are, and which amounts are gonna go, are gonna be applied toward principal, and which are gonna be applied toward interest. Now in the first year, first couple of years, roughly 80 to 90% of what you pay is gonna to go toward the interest payments. And then, like I said earlier, over the course of the loan, that's gonna shift, and most of those will go toward the principal balance on the back end. Now, here's where it gets good. If you keep that house for 30 years, in interest, you're going to pay $937,495. Add back in the $617,500 that you originally borrowed, and that $650,000 home is gonna cost you well over $1.5 million. Doesn't seem fair, does it? So let's figure out a way that we can kind of flip the tide a little bit. Here's where tip number one comes in. You're going to pay one additional mortgage payment per year. Now, I don't advise that you pay $4,300 per month unless you have it like that or per year, unless you have it to give in one lump sum. We're gonna divide that amount by 12. So essentially, you're looking at about $360 extra per month. If you do that strategy, you're gonna knock off about seven years, six years and eight months to be exact, but it's gonna save you a whopping $246,000. I don't know about you, but a quarter of a million, that's a nice chunk of change that I'd love to keep in my pocket. Now, here's the tip to running this play effectively. You will have to notify your lender that you want that additional payment applied towards your principal. If you don't, the lender will apply it to your, to your interest, which means that the strategy, although it will work over time, it's not gonna work as effectively because you wanna reduce that principal as fast as you possibly can, which lowers the interest payments that you have and thus lowers the amount of time that you're gonna pay back on that loan. So make sure you tell your lender you want it applied to the principal. So the second tip is to break up your payments bi-weekly. So you wanna make sure you can do this because every lender doesn't actually allow you to do this. But if you can, in this example, you would be paying $2,158.50 every two weeks. Now, you might say, well, when I add it up, the number, the total number winds up being the same each and every month. And you would technically be correct. But here's where this gets tricky at. So when I worked in corporate America, I think at the time that I left, I was making about $80,000 a year. Now the simple calculation when you do that would break it down to say that I was making a, roughly over $6,600 a month or $3,300 every two weeks. However, that's not how my employer calculated my salary. They base it on 52 weeks in the year. So essentially, instead of being paid 
24 times a year, I was paid 26 times a year, which reduced the amount from 3,300 that I thought that I was gonna get to about 3,100. And I'm still kind of mad how they got me on that one, but everybody gets got on that one because most of us don't think that the 52 week thing. But anyway, for a mortgage, it works the exact same way. So in this instance, instead of making 12 annual payments, you're actually gonna make 13 payments. So you get one extra payment of 21.58.50. That's gonna shorten your payment by about four years and save you roughly $139,000. Now tip number three is kind of not going to work for everybody out there. It's probably a small portion of people that this works for. And that's essentially to double your monthly mortgage payment. Now, if you got an extra four grand sitting around, kudos to you. I'm going to applaud you for being financially well to do but for most people they won't be able to do this so if that's not you tune this out if that is you however consider using that extra four thousand dollars plus to apply toward your monthly mortgage payment why because it means that you will pay off your mortgage in eight years and it's going to save you roughly seven hundred and thirty four thousand dollars so three quarters of a million dollars you will save and you will cut down your monthly mortgage time drastically by at least over a third of the time. Now, again, that strategy is not going to work for everybody. But if it works for you, I would strongly look into making that work to your advantage. Now, as you can see, paying off your mortgage ahead of schedule is a smart move. But not all experts will agree that it's the best move for you to make. So there's kind of a tug of war going on. Some people will say, yes, it's a smart move to pay off your mortgage early. Others will say, no, instead of paying off your mortgage early, use that money to invest in your retirement or to pay off additional debt. The choice whether to pay off your mortgage early is really up to you. It's not a one and done or one size fits all type of situation. So you just have to really sit down and analyze where you are financially and figure out whether it makes sense for you to actually pay off your mortgage or to use that money for something else. It's like a financial puzzle. Every piece for everybody is gonna fit a little bit differently because no two puzzles are exactly alike in the world of a mortgage payment. Again, if you're considering paying off a mortgage, it could be a smart idea. But again, this idea is not great for everybody. So I would recommend this if you are somebody that has three to six months of living expenses tucked away. Why do I say that? Because if you have living expenses in say like a savings account, it's easier to withdraw that money when you need it rather than trying to pull that money out of your house. So for example, my dad got a, he got a home equity line, he got a home equity line of credit on his home. We really sat down and analyzed what, whether this was the best move for him to make because he needed to get a roof repair and he had some debts that he wanted to, to get paid off. Originally, it didn't kind of add up to him to, to get this home equity line of credit. But when we sat down and ran the numbers, it wound up being that you're going to pay back the loan at a lower amount than what you would pay back if you just kept the debt. So it's probably better to eliminate the debt because I think it was like credit cards, we're talking like 18, 19, 20% versus an interest rate of six and a half, six and three quarter percent on money that you can take out of your home and knock out two birds with one stone. Well, now you get your roof repaired, you get your debt eliminated, that's gonna help boost your credit score. Now, yeah, you're taking loans on the house, but you're already paying back the debt on the credit cards. So it just makes sense to pay a lower amount to be able to get money. So this is one of the advantages of being a homeowner. Like if you're a renter, you can't really tap into the equity of the building because you don't own it. So this is why we push big on home ownership. Now here's the final tip that I said that I was gonna give you. Try rounding up your payments to the nearest $100. So in this example, instead of paying 4317, you're gonna pay 4400. That's gonna knock off two years off your mortgage and save you $74,000 over the life of the loan. Now, that might not be a lot of change, but it's still a significant portion of money, especially when you consider that you're gonna also be paying homeowner's insurance. And to find out how that's gonna affect you as a homeowner, you're gonna wanna watch this video next.